Hey, Jeff, do you know what type of podcast we are? Well, we're not a history podcast. That's correct. We're a comedy podcast. So any jokes, skits, or anything else we say is not reflective of our organizations, businesses, or any sponsors that we're associated with, even charities. So remind yourself, if you're offended, it's okay. It's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 558. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. Is Brian. And I'm Brian. Hey, hey, Brian's there by Skype. Brian, are you in the foothills of Kentucky this week? Yes, I am deep, deep in the mountains. Oh, how's that treating you? Uh, it's glorious. Okay, good. I've, I've already started... I've already started looking for properties. Ooh. That's going to be a long commute. He just uh, commute for, for podcasting. Skype. <laughs> That's why they invented <laughs> Skype. If if you want we can look into other things, you know, maybe uh, Zoom or uh, uh there is another one that we could use uh that's much better too. So, probably. yeah. That Brad has. Brad from Old Man Brad. Old Man Brad. Old Man Brad. Oh, I don't have it ready. Oh, that's all right. Can you, come on, old man. Uh, Brian, how many dogs are you watching right now? Uh, I'm, I'm Brad. currently watching. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, hi, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am currently dog sitting for three dogs and 14 cats. Jeezel. That's a lot of cats. That's pretty good. Yes. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, uh, a fair amount of them are barn or outdoor like farm cats. So gotcha, but still, still caring for them for the week. Well, I know you're going to be upset because this week, right before we went to air, we got a gift package from Izzy and Steve of all of our magnets and bottle openers for the history of bad ideas podcast for our comic expo. So, October 18th through the uh, 20th. Well, Sharonville Convention Center, right? That's right. Get your tickets at CincinnatiComicExpo.com and uh, come see us. We'll be on the basement, in the basement by the panel rooms. We'll be running the panel rooms. Uh, and come see us October 18th through the 20th. And we you could win a free bottle opener. We'll hand out some magnets. We have a Hobie, fax machine inter- Hobie intern fax machine magnets. History of Bad Ideas, uh, bottle openers. We have, uh, what is it, number five in Switzerland? Number five in Switzerland. We are the number five pop culture podcast in Switzerland. Ask That's me proven. about my history podcast. And ask me about my history podcast. So, um, yeah, come on down, say hi to us. we got lots of great guests, Jason Isaacs, Chuck Norris, uh, lots of the voice actors from X-Men 97, uh, the original and the new one, because uh, there's a couple different voices on the new one. Gotcha. Uh, Katie Sackoff. Um, not Christina Ricci. Ming Na Wen. Ming Na Wen. Kevin uh, Eastman. Yep, Kevin Eastman, which I'm looking forward to his panel. Um, so, yeah. Uh, schedules mm-hmm. for the panel. Who? Mina Sorvino. Oh, Mira Sorvino. That's right. That's right. I'm going to ask her about Mimic. And, uh, yeah. So, the panel uh, schedule will be coming out in a couple weeks. Um, I believe you can still put in for fan panels if you would like to host a fan panel. Uh, I'm not sure how many is going to be this year because it's limited. It's limited this year because of this. Um, we're at Sharonville for a couple years and then before we go back to the Duke Convention Center. 
um, if that ever gets done uh, <laughs> in six years, ten years, whatever. Yeah, uh, um, they are still – they are starting to ask for volunteers as well. So if anybody that's listening wants to come hang out and volunteer, uh, we posted it on our Facebook page this week. That's right. That's right. So it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah. Brian, I, I, I've got one question here for you. What's that? Can you give me a noun? <laughs> Why is noun so difficult? Because <laughs> you feel wrong if you don't get the right one. <laughs> Brian? Yeah. Do you Sorry. have a noun? Uh, um... It's not your question. <laughs> Did you say something? Mailman. Ooh, mailman. That's a good one. Jason, give me an adjective. Scrumptious. Speaking of scrumptious, I'm about ready to bite into one of these shack shackalicious gummies. Ooh. It's a giant shack head, and Those I'll be are honest. big for gummies. And it's kind of creeping me out, I'll be honest. I'm a little creeped out. Uh, Brian, oh. shoot me an adjective. Mm-mm. Jason's getting disgusted um, by Shaq's head. Tastes like feet. Did you say adjective, Jeff? I did, yes. Aggressive. Ooh. <clears throat> These gummies are aggressive. <laughs> they're not horrible, but they're way too big. Jason, another adjective. Ginormous. Oh. Ginormous. It really takes away from the flavor, too, these Shackalicious gummies. And Brian, we might as well get another adjective. Oh my God. Mm, let's go with mm-hmm. itchy. Ooh. I like it. Plural noun, Jason. Plural noun. Penises. Oh. Penises. There it is. Uh, plural noun, uh, uh, Brian. Plural noun. Oh. Um, let's go with, uh, vaginas, dogs. No, oh, that's not as much fun. Uh, Jason, a type of liquid. <laughs> pickle juice. Why does he get all the questionable ones? <laughs> I said pickle juice. Uh, Spe- I'm going in order. Speaking of that, one of our uh, volunteers, Corey. Uh, his pickles are for sale still. If you would like to re- get a jar of pickles, I believe they're eight, uh, eight dollars for the spicy ones, seven dollars for the regular ones. We get no kickback at all. We're just really big fans. Um, so if you come to the um, expo uh, last year, you would have seen him. Um, and then, like I said, Brian and I just bought some. Uh, if you would like them, reach out to us at Bad Ideas Podcast on uh, Twitter. If you're local, Cincinnati. Yeah, uh, you got to be local or local pickup. Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. But you come to the uh, Comic Expo, we can have them there for you. Yeah, we will. Uh, Brian, I need a number. Six hundred and forty-three. And Jason, I need an adjective. Adjective. (sighs) Poisonous. Is that an adjective? It is. Okay. I don't know why I was second guessing myself. What are we doing? Which uh, Mad Libs are we doing? Oh, we're doing Brian's favorite. Uh, Star Wars. Yes. Oh, okay. Just checking. Sorry, Brian. I need outstanding. An, I need an adverb. Adverb. Mm. Um. Let's go with accidentally. Accidentally. Brian, um, just to let you know, we do have some ranch cotton candy here for you still. We're going to save it for next week when you're back in the office. Yeah. Yeah. Shocker that Doug backed out. Uh, yeah, Doug was supposed <laughs> to be he here, but then. we have to eat that. Yeah. He couldn't make it now that the ranch cotton candy was still in the uh, studio. Oh, I can't make it. Uh, Jason, plural noun. Plural. Pyramids. See, Brian's not questionable. And a noun for Brian. Lots of nouns in this one. There are a lot of nouns. Mm, a lot of nouns in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. 
Star yes. Wars does have a um, lot of nouns. Let's go with pencils. Oh, pencils. Or pencil, sorry. Pencil. Okay. Right. Pencil. I like that. I like that. Uh, noun, Jason. Another one? Yep. <sighs> Nuts. Nut. Nut. Well, no, it's plural. It's plural. I didn't say plural. Oh, nut. Nut. Sorry. Um, another noun, Brian. Uh, oh, let's go with mm-hmm. Birmingham. Oh, a proper noun. I like it. And we'll finish off with an adjective, Jason. An adjective. Uh, I'm going to say... Oh, that's a tough one. An adjective. Um, crazy? Crazy. Okay. This Mad Libs is Escape to Naboo by Padme Amidala. If you ever need to get away from the hustle and mailman of a scrumptious city, I recommend taking a trip to my aggressive home planet, Naboo. Oh. The lake country on this ginormous green planet Mm -hmm. is one of the most itchy places in the entire galaxy. Here (laughs) you'll find houses with ancient columned penises <laughs> that that floats and babbling dogs mm-hmm. filled with the bluest purest pickle juice you've ever seen there are waterfalls over 643 feet high and poisonous grasses to get lost in oh. it's the perfect place to fall accidentally in love well it is I think there's a song about that. That's right. In fact, many newly pyramids like myself and Anakin Pencil Walker consider the lake country on Naboo the perfect destination for a honey nut. But be careful when you visit. The Peace and Birmingham are so crazy you may never want to leave. Aww. I like it. Uh, Let's see here. I started singing Accidentally in Love in my head. (laughs) (laughs) Accidentally. Not the worst one that we've had. Not the worst ones. There was a lot of nouns. Oh, I was so waiting, though, after you said penises for Brian to add vaginas. Brian's too clean. Brian's too nice for that. But it would have... It would have fit. uh, Yeah. It would have then been... So... Ancient columned penises and babbling is... vaginas. <laughs> I'm like, oh god! <laughs> oh, that would have, yeah, that would have been amazing. I uh, just want to uh, let you. you... Know, but... Sorry, sorry, Brian. Sorry. No, no, you're good. I was just saying, you know, uh, the first uh, ad Mad Lib that I've been able to participate in. So I had a little, uh, you know, a little nerves. Yeah. So. You did good, though. You did good. So, Jeff, you're trying the Shackalicious uh, gummies? Yep, I'm pulling out the Shackalicious gummies. I think I've got one of each flavor. Here. Yeah, so the, once you start eating, like, the first wave of them, you're like, oh, this is, like, ginormous. And it's not really that great, because gummies need to be a little bit smaller. Um, but by the time you get to the sixth one, like I did, it wasn't okay. horrible. Well, I'm going to start with Berry Punch. <laughs> oh, It's a blue shack head. Okay. While you chew that... Uh, you can find us on YouTube Music at the History of Bad Ideas podcast, so check us out there. We're on nerdly.co.uk. Good day, Governor. Uh, great reviews, great website. We love Phil and Kevin and everybody over there. Um, you know, you can find us on Amazon uh, Music Podcast, uh, all of that stuff. So check us out. Uh, you can find us on Apple as well. Uh, but we have a lot of new listeners since we went to YouTube Music. Uh, we also have a, lot, a couple people that don't like us. Uh, so the new the new critique of our show. You ready? Um, I haven't heard this one yet. No, I just saw it today. Yeah, me neither. This, is, uh, this right. guy has no content on his channel, so that's nice. Um, so <laughs> I guess he just goes on there and listens to people. 
which yeah. is fine. Well, that's what I do on my personal. I have yeah. no personal that's... content. He looks like a greaser, though. He looks like he's from the 1960s uh, with the leather jacket and that. Yeah, um, wrong with that. Nope. Just telling you what he looks like. Uh, I have a new name for the show. The History of No Ideas. Ooh, I like it. Ooh. <laughs> zinger. <laughs> zinger, zinger. Man. Did he go on he or that us. was it? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> oh, man. Come on. More. Um. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, we apologize if you don't maybe like our show. If, What's that? Maybe when I maybe if I move, that can be our spinoff podcast that I can create. I like it. The history of no ideas. You know what? That's not a bad idea. When we spin off, and this guy will be or, not credited for it. <laughs> um. Yeah. Or so it could be the history of no bad ideas. Yes. Yeah. So usually, if you're new to the show, we don't usually have Skype on. It's usually six at five to well three to five of us uh, in the studios, uh, and then we have a guest sometimes, um, like last week's episode. Uh, but this week, a lot of people were out. Blake's out. Jim's out. Jim should be back next week. Uh, Brian's dog sitting, so that's why we got Brian on the Skype. On the Skype, we were just going to go original gangsters and with Doug. Of Jeff, Jeff and me, but we decided to throw Brian in since you know Doug chickened out about the ranch cotton candy. So, um, for those who yeah. didn't listen last week when Doug made us eat ranch cotton candy without him here, it was awful, it was terrible. Now we need Doug to try, it. you know. And to be honest, I don't care about his reaction mm-hmm. because I don't trust his reaction. No, genuine. He's going to tell us it's not bad, no matter how terrible it is. Correct. But I want him to have to taste it and could, lie to us. Yeah. Could be good. Could be good. It wasn't. He said he doesn't like cotton candy, but he likes ranch. I don't know. Maybe he'll like it. Maybe he'll hate it because it's too cotton candy. Candy? Candy? Is that a word? It is now. <laughs> which can it? Which Kennedy is that? Uh, it's the one that didn't die or have an affair. None of them. Oh! Is it, is it the one that's coming back to life to be president? Uh, RFK? No, oh, J- no, no, JFK. JFK Jr. You know, I can fly into the ocean uh, without yeah, issue. Different. Yeah. I, I'm a pilot. I can go under the fog. Uh, too bad RFK Jr. Uh, stopped his bid for president. Did he officially stop? He did. No. Okay. He pulled out. <laughs> that isn't what I meant to say, but okay. He probably showed up sometimes. And and then went ahead and, and endorsed uh, the, the Republican nominee. You know he's married to a Hollywood star? Yes. I did not know that. Cheryl Hines. Hines that's right. So I did not realize well, that. I, I know that now. I did not realize that until the controversy of after he endorsed the Republican nominee. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm telling you, just write in Obi Wan Kenobi. He's going to set us straight. Just do it. Or the one I saw, the I one we're going Vader Palpatine. That probably works too. I did see one uh, uh, Chewbacca Solo. Uh, it says "Let the Wookiee Win." Uh, that's their Ooh. tag. I like that one. Um, Speak of Star Wars, I know Brian's really excited about this. I slogged about. Huh? Uh, get ready, Brian. I logged 18 hours <laughs> on Star Wars Outlaws this past week. And let me tell you, it's a brand new game. I paid the 100 bucks to get the early access and get the uh, downloadable content. It's a open world, Red Dead Redemption type game uh, of Star Wars. You're a smuggler. Now, Jeff, Brian, get ready, because, Brian, there's some... I know you're shocked. Some controversy. You're a woman in it. What? You have to oh, be no. a woman. Have to be a woman. Um, people were mad. No. Canceled. Yep. Um, Cancel it. Well, here's the best part. They're like, why can't we get a choice? Why are you making us be a woman? Well, if you look at the Jedi Survivor that came out three years ago or two years ago, you had to be a man in it. You had no choice to be a woman. So who the fuck cares? Sons of bitches. Why do you got to fucking ruin everything? Anyways, do you get to design your character? No. Oh. There's no design. It's a fucking character. Just go play it. Who cares? It's the best part of those games. I, I get it, but your character. You, in Red Dead Redemption, you don't change who you're, you are, right? You're right. So you can put different clothes on and all jackets and, you know, bandoliers and all that stuff. So that's fun. But it's like, who the fuck cares? It's a character. Just go play it. Uh, and your choices are the ones that shape the character. It's not like, 
you know, your preset. Anyways, open world, uh, wonderful game. Um, Did you I, finish it? No, no, no. It's like 40 hours just for the story time and storylines. And then it's like Red Dead. There's so many side quests. There's so much things. The, the um, Galactic Empire Stormtroopers, it takes place between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And the Galactic Empire, the Stormtroopers are kind of like the cops. And you're a smuggler. And you get to choose what five, one of five, uh, actually four of the five, uh, one of the four uh, crime syndicates that you want to work for. Now, you can work for all of them, but your choices based on how you work makes the other re- relationships go up and down. Uh-huh. So, like, I hate the Pikes. Fuck the Pikes. They're in um, the uh, Obi-Wan. They're on Tatooine. Or a lot to Shar. Um, to Shar. Sorry, not Tatooine. That's the Huts. Uh, anyways, so fuck them. They're in a couple of the TV shows. When you're saying fuck the Pikes, the only thing I could think of was, damn, I feel like I'm back in college when someone's mad at the uh, other team, Pi Kappa, whatever uh, <laughs> fraternity. It's not a fraternity; it's a crime syndicate. If you're a Pike, I'm sorry, but the Pikes were assholes. Well, that's why I'm against them. So, um, but I can't get into some of their areas because they hate me. So I have to sneak in. But like, if I'm with the Crimson Dawn right now and they love me. So I start going into them, but it's really fun because like job of the huts in it. He tries to get you to cr- double cross, like all of them get you to double cross uh, the other ones. You get to go visit job of the huts. Yeah. And is Han Solo frozen? Car yes, right he there? is. He cool. is. Cool. Uh, I mean, pretty cool. spoiler alert, Brian. Sorry. Um, oh, oh, it's okay. Sorry. It's okay. Um, but oh. it's a lot of fun. Uh, I took off Wednesday from work just to play it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Brian's laughing. <laughs> And then my wife on Labor Day weekend, we actually had no sports things because it was too hot. They canceled it. And then my couple of my kids just had no sports activities. So my wife was painting all weekend and decided to paint the first floor and she won't let me paint. Oh, I thought you meant like artistic on an easel. No, 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 no. She just painted the whole first floor. life. Started Friday night and finished until Monday morning. Yeah, I've seen you attempt to paint Jason. That's a smart move on your wife. You know what I did? Brought the PlayStation 5 down to the living room and just played it while she painted. She, and I watched the kids. <laughs> of course, they really don't need much watching now. Um, two of the nights, they were at a, two of the kids were at somebody's house, a friend's house, uh, for a sleepover. So it really wasn't that difficult. But anyway, so I got to play a lot more that day, too, this weekend. Uh, highly recommend it. It takes about three to four hours to get into it. But once you're in... It's fantastic. Uh, you fly around. Uh, you get into your ship and just fly up into the space without any loading issues. Like, you just fly up there and you can start attacking people, getting cargo. It's awesome. Pew, pew, I attack you. Pew, yeah. pew, I attack it's, you. And it's really fun, too, because uh, I took a picture on the PlayStation uh, with uh, me right next to Bantas, uh, <laughs> the big hairy elephant. So, uh, highly, highly recommend Star Wars Outlaws if you're a fan of Star Wars. Brian, don't get it. It's telling you now. Oh, I wasn't planning on it. Okay. Okay. I'm That's... going for a pumpkin spice Oreo now. We've had these before. Pumpkin spice Oreos. And they're quite delightful. So, Brian, you got any? Season. It is the season. Brian, you got anything you're eating over there today? Uh, not right now. Oh, damn it. I don't, I got, I'll have to go to the pantry. Okay. Okay. The thing about these pumpkin spice Oreos, yeah, is it's not just the pumpkin spice. There's a little bit of pumpkin in there also. Mm-hmm. And it's not overbearing. No. Well, this is why they're better than most of the pumpkin spice things. Mm-hmm. Is because those are just like the spices you use to treat the pie. This actually has taste of pumpkin also. I like it. We had this. We had this off air last week, courtesy of Jim. Uh, but we had it before on our podcast last year, I think. So very well done. Uh, Brian, have you watched anything this week? Oh, uh, let's see. I uh, caught up. I'm now on. Uh, I'm current with SEAL Team. <laughs> How uh, many seasons? I'm, Eight. I'm in, I'm in season seven. Seven. Okay. Seven. Yeah. So I'm I'm current, and I have the the most current episode to watch that just just got released. Um, so I'm, I've been burning through that. Um, at this point, I'll be happy that it's over. 
Um, wow, he's pot committed. I, so I, I, I like the the show, but I also hate the the main character, uh, David Boreanaz. Like in real uh, life, or just, like I just, just in the show? Him. No, like I, the character. Oh, I hate okay, the character. He's really good. He, he's really good, but he's just a he's he's just an asshole. Like he's a he just sucks. Okay, um, and he's annoying. And like throughout the seven seasons, like he's just like all of his problems are like he's back and forth with all of the same problems throughout the whole seven season. He never figures anything out. <laughs> so it's just really annoying. But other than that, I like the show. Obviously, I've still watched it. Um, but at this point, I will, I will I will be happy when they finish it. <laughs> Put down the poster. You, what you said reminded me. Um, I, 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 I'm going to interrupt just for a second, just to get my little story. Yeah, yeah, out you're good. There. But I had just seen a YouTube clip where a guy was giving his list of movies that were better than the books, and the, his number one answer was Children of Men. He says, hmm. "Love the movie. The book is garbage." Wow. And he's like, you know. You're starting to read this, and the main character, the guy who you're following and cheering for the whole time, uh, like at the start of like an early chapter, he talks about the time when he accidentally backed up and killed his 14 month daughter. What? And didn't doesn't really care that he did it, and he might care more if she wasn't so ugly. That's in the book, <laughs> apparently. And he's like, and this is the guy who we have to read about for the rest of the book. And we hate this guy. So he's like, the movie oh. was much better than the book. That's a bold choice, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out. Uh, wow. Man. Okay. So talking about not liking the lead character. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's That's certainly a choice. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 something that bad. I'm surprised they turned around and made a movie off of it, and then made it. Decent. Did you see the movie Children of? Ch- I did. It was fine. I liked it. Yeah, it wasn't great, but it wasn't yeah, it bad. Was... Make yeah, you check that's like... on the poster. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else you watch, Brian? Uh, yeah. So hmm. I also started watching Fire Country. Oh, where, where the convicts uh, oh. start helping fight fires. Can't open those, Jeff. We haven't gotten yeah. those yet. Oh. That's next week. But Jeff's trying to open up the peanut butter cake stirs. Can't do that. Can't do it. I didn't Why have not? dinner They're tonight. Because Jim brought them and he said They're we have to wait till he's here next week. So. Okay. No, they are Jim's, I um, guess. <laughs> yeah, so I started watching Fire Country. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is that is written... Directed and starring one of the main characters from SEAL Team. I did not know that. Um, so I think he leaves SEAL Team to start this show. Oh. Um, so, like... Yeah, Is it the like, same character? It, no, no, no. It's oh, okay. The, the same, same actor. Actor. Okay. Yeah, but he, like... <clears throat> like, he, he, like, he leaves SEAL Team and then... I'm like, I, I I think I want to check this out. And I start watching. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> he looks familiar. And then I did a little research and he, so he's, he's, he's writing, producing and acting in, in fire country. Nice. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm only like five. I'm only like five episodes in, but, um, it's a little over dramatic. Um, like, like unbelievable over the top dramatics, but um, it is a I mean, network TV show. That's true. That's true. Is there twenty two episodes um, each season? Uh, I hope not. Um, <laughs> that was one thing. <clears throat> that was one thing with SEAL Team that really kind of caught me off guard, and I actually I think uh, you might have saw. I tweeted about it. Mm-hmm. So, so like the first, I want to say like two or three seasons, 
of SEAL Team was on network TV, mm-hmm. and then it went streaming. It went Paramount Plus only. Yeah, and I did. I didn't know that. So like, I'm watch. I'm watching the first three seasons, like 22 episodes, 21 episodes. And I start the fourth season, like episode one. They're kind of like setting up, you know, recapping and setting up from you know last season into the new season. Mm-hmm. And then out of nowhere, uh, David Boreanaz just starts like, like cussing, like <laughs> "fuck you" oh. and like this and that. And I was like, "Wait a second, what? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> like, is this like some like, you know, like is this like ec- like an extra like thing that they're doing? Like because they're I don't know. I, I, it caught me like way off guard. I was like, you know, like uh, so, but one. Once they went to Paramount Plus, uh, they uh, dropped the episode count dramatically. Gotcha. Uh, to like ten episodes, so like cut it in half, and it's been awesome. Well, Do they I, cuss a lot more? Well, obviously, y- yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's it's like it's significantly like gotcha. noticeable. Well, I just brought up Fire um, Country on IMDb, and according mm-hmm. to them, season one, 22 episodes. Ugh. Season two, 10. Yes. Season two, 10. Season two, 10. Oh, thank God. Season three starts uh, in October. I think season two was cut short because of the writer's strike. Oh, that could be. Um, yeah, that uh, that makes sense. But they're also doing the spinoff, uh, like, up from it. It's, uh, like, Sheriff. Yes. Country or something. Sheriff Country. With, uh, <laughs> it's just I, the I, title. I really think that's what it is. <laughs> um, I could be wrong. It is, yeah, it's 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 legitimately called Sheriff Country. Hey, EMT uh, Country. <laughs> <laughs> Nurse Country. Yeah. Hey, they had all their Chicago ones. That's We're going to have all our country ones. <laughs> And every single one is convict yeah. taken over. He's a sheriff, but he's a convict <laughs> or he's a criminal. He's a nurse. Criminal. <laughs> EMT. Criminal. I, I sense the theme. Lawyer <laughs> country. <laughs> lawyer. <laughs> is it true you're not real lawyer? <laughs> Sorry. I don't know where I came from. <laughs> uh, pirate country. Yeah. Oh, no, no. They're real criminals. You can't do that. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Doctor Country. <laughs> I'm just happy you got I mean, that all to look forward to, Brian. <laughs> I'm I'm excited about it. I mean, okay. what? Why not? Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you go see the movie The Crow this weekend? Uh, I did not because uh, I've been on location, uh, <laughs> house and pet sitting. <laughs> Uh, I, I I wanted to I was going to look to see if I could if I could rent it. Uh, the yeah, house I don't know if it's available to rent yet. Oh, no, the movie. The, the movie. <laughs> I assumed it was probably going to be like available like soon to watch online. Oh, given we'll get to it's, that. It's made, made like eleven dollars in the theaters. Uh, yeah, it. it um, I'll, I'll save you the money. Just go rent the original. <laughs> that might be a better choice. So, did uh, you see it? No, not yet. I actually kind of want to see it though, okay. um, but I I'm just wait. <laughs> you know, you know that I don't, I don't care about critics or reviews yeah. or anything like that. So, it, you know, uh, it, if it looks like it, it looks interesting to me, uh, it, it obviously I'm, I, I know that it's not going to be the original. Yeah. Even though they're trying to like remake it or reboot it or whatever, but nothing like this won't take away anything from the original for me it'll just it's just not going to be it'll just yeah. be a different crow that's like, what like i gotta figure too version. i feel like that too like, um jeff did, mean, jeff did you watch anything this weekend oh uh, i probably watched a lot of things um yeah i think we we were watching uh marathoning er so i watched a bunch of episodes oh geez of the last Ooh. season of er okay uh, also, happy birthday, Jeff. You had a birthday this past week. I did, yes. Did you do anything exciting? Happy I birthday. watched a bunch of episodes of <laughs> ER. <laughs> nice. 
I celebrate your birthday kind of the same way. I was on the couch playing Star Wars Outlaws. <laughs> Sweet. Well, thank you for celebrating my birthday in such yeah. a glo- uh, global uh, We will have done something way. with you, but uh, my wife was, uh, in, was basically painting all weekend. I was happy to do nothing. You know what? This was a very relaxing weekend. It was really nice. So I'm with you. Did anybody watch the Kobayashi thing? No. Who I, won? I heard Kobayashi won. Or, I mean, yeah, no. he broke his own. He broke his own record. Wait, Kobayashi won? No, Johnny did. Didn't he? It was Chestnut won. Chestnut won. Chestnut, yeah, yeah, Chestnut, yeah. Sorry, that's Chestnut who won. I meant. To, that's who I was thinking of. But yeah, Chestnut. He broke his own record. I, okay. I don't know what that. I, I just. Okay. Only reason I I brought it up was because the Bengals announced today that uh, uh, Chestnut will be the halftime entertainment uh, <laughs> this Sunday. Oh. He'll be eating bratwurst during halftime. Oh. Good for him. Good for him. <laughs> will he be eating it or just <laughs> swallowing it? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, let's see here. Well, now I wish I uh, had tickets to the game just so I could watch Joey Chestnut eat bratwurst. Do you want to go to the Bengals game? No, I just want to see the, <laughs> the eating contest. Uh, let's see here. We didn't have a poll of the week this week. Uh, holiday weekend. Kind of completely forgot about. So we'll get yeah. back to it next week at Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook as well. We're on threads. All that stuff. Anyways. Brian, do you have an outline in front of you? I know this was last minute. Or if not. It's no big deal. Uh, yeah, no, I do. Yeah, I got to pull it up on my phone. Okay, do you want to do the listener feedback? I certainly do. Go right ahead. I don't have any paper, so I'll just make the like that, that noise. Um, listener feedback sponsored by Hello Jeff. What do we got in the box this week? Uh, this week we were sponsored, or... Uh... Not spon- well, yeah, sure, fine, sponsored by Shackalicious Gummies. Uh, but we were, yeah, inspired. So not only do you get Shackalicious Extra Large Gummies, mm-hmm. but you actually get peaches, berries, and oranges. All extra large? Everything's extra large. Oh, oh because but of Shack. You get the real fruit and then the gummy thing, so you can compare your own orange to Shack's head. Yes. That tastes... Not like an orange. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, that's a very good box. Interesting. Does it come in an extra large box this week? Uh, yeah. Matter of fact, shipping costs kind of went up because the box sizes were okay. increased. Uh, don't forget, Hobie Pod is your t- discount 15%. Uh, also, uh, go to hellojeff.com. Also, hello Jeff box. I'm sorry, dot com. Uh, we had to change it because of legal issues. Um, but also... Um, the sense of extra large boxes, it might take a little while for the post office to get to them. So just be ready. Uh, if you live in like, you know, Akron, Ohio, it may go all the way to San Diego and then back to you. But it, it'll get there. It will get there. It'll get there eventually. Yes. Yeah. The fruit, oh. fruit doesn't go bad, yeah. so you're fine. No, fruit never spoils. No, no, it'll be fine. So uh, go ahead. J- Bl- or what's your name? Brian. What's- <laughs> go ahead with the listener feedback. Jim Blay Bryan. All right. Uh, starting off with what's that? <laughs> Nothing. He called you Jim Blay Bryan. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's what I thought I heard. But uh, well, we always start off with uh, the same person every week. Number one fan. Everybody knows him. A pans. Beaver hands. A pans. Beaver tail. Beaver nugget. Beaver hip. Ooh, beaver hip. Uh, Sunny D. The delivery man. Chili Billy. Jewel of the Licking. Screwdriver. The Hammer. Oh, that's a good one. The Thought Provoker. Oh. Uh, he Dunkaroo makes, Doug. <laughs> oh, Dunkaroo, Dunkaroo Doug. Doug. <laughs> he makes you go, hmm. Make, things that make you go, hmm. Ranch. Concierge. Concierge. He does. Yeah, he, he he's he's the person that makes us go, bleh. <laughs> 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 the man that makes us go blah. Sounds like an old 1960s Western spaghetti film. <laughs> spaghetti Western, not Western spaghetti. Yeah, probably, That'd be a would, dinner. It would probably be ranch flavored spaghetti. Yes. <laughs> um, um, it, it's Doug. Yes. Yeah, it's just Doug. 
Uh, Doug says, 30 years ago, the Media Place store in Western Hills, Norwood, and Florence opened. How much money did you spend there? Also, do you miss stores like these? So just give you everybody an update here. Uh, can I give you an idea? Media Play, per Wikipedia, was a chain of retail stores founded in 1992 by Musicland that sold VHS, DVDs, Laserdiscs, music, electronics, toys, video games, anime, books, and board games. Uh, each store contained a full book, movie, music, and video game sections under one roof. At their height, they operated 72 stores in 19 states. I didn't know they were that big. With 2,000 employees. First one opened in 92 in Rockford, Illinois. Uh, hundreds of stores were slated to be open, but only 89 were ever made. They just said 72. Um, Media Play opened stores from 1992 to 2000. My God, even in 2000, they were opening stores. Uh, yeah. yeah. So they were purchased in 2001 for, by Best Buy. For six hundred and ninety-six million, ah. which would equal to one point one four billion in two thousand twenty-three money. Wow! I preferred Media Play over Best Buy. I did too. I felt Media Play was Same. like a smaller, yeah. ta- a small town type feel to it. Yeah, I mean, like Be- Best Buy was is where you go for the electronics. So if you wanted a television or a washer dryer or shit like that, mm-hmm. where. Like you went to get your books and movies and and music, mm-hmm. and not I. I liked media play better. I did too. Uh, I went to the one in Western Hills. Brian, you went to them a lot too, didn't you? Yeah, uh, the one in Norwood uh, opened. I want to say in like ninety five, ninety six, mm-hmm. uh, and it was literally like it was like two blocks from the high school in Surrey Square, uh, and they opened it with, at the same time as they opened, like, a brand, the brand new McDonald's, Ooh. and they had, like, the entrances were connected, mm-hmm. like, you could go into Media Play through McDonald's, Ooh. or vice versa, um, so, like, that's where, like, uh, like, everybody from high school, like, after school, like, not, not everybody, but, like, a lot of us would leave school and then go hang out there for a couple hours, you know, uh, so I spent a lot of time there. They had um, and money. Yeah, I spent a lot. Of, I bought a lot of movies from them, um, and price CDs at the time. Um, so here's the yeah, best. Bought, part. Oh, sorry. No, I was just gonna say I bought most of my music from there for the longest time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, we usually uh, would buy our DVDs from like Hollywood Video or Blockbuster because they always had like. 10 for 20 mm-hmm. uh, like the like the used yeah you know what i mean yeah so well i will say so this is the best part you ready for this so they were bought for 696 million in 2001 right in 2002 they lost 85 million dollars in sales uh as a result best buy immediately put the company back up for sale wow <laughs> Uh, Sun Capital Partners of Boca Raton, Florida, bought them uh, in exchange for acquiring. Oh, so Sun Capital Partners acquired the company in a cash free transaction in exchange for acquiring Musicland's debt and leases. They attempted to get the company back to basics, but in December 2005, they announced the closure at all stores. So there you go. So they fi- they finished wow. closing in 2006. But that is not a good investment. Who was the guy working for Best Buy that was like, hey, I got this investment. Let's buy Media Play. We'll, we'll, we'll make tons of money on it. Sounds great, Richard. Next Six months later, oh, we lost $85 million, sir. Uh, Richard, you suck. I'm trying to remember. I'm thinking Media or uh, Best Buy had to have done something to change the business model that Media Play was running because – that just seemed overnight after they got it, it stopped. Yeah, because you don't yeah. figure, like, you can't say all every all the media places went out. Business. Not media play, but, like, all digital media, or, I mean, uh, d- videos, movie places, stores went out. business. They didn't, because Best Buy was still around. Yeah. So, yeah, they must have done something. But, I mean, it, it, it was definitely the time when, yeah, digital uh, uh, music and whatnot was... Uh, really coming into Starting its own, and and yeah, a lot of people were 
buying that online and i guess that's also about the time i guess amazon was starting to to rise pretty powerful so the stuff you can get at media play yeah. you can order probably cheaper on amazon what was that uh streaming site you can get all your music too for free that w- was the, shut down you steal your music yeah steal music oh yeah like uh Rabbit. Napster. Napster. That's what it was. LimeWire. Yeah. LimeWire. I mean, that was pretty popular at that time, too, that they started downloading that. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, probably yeah. right or in that same window when like iTunes came out. Yeah, mm-hmm. iTunes started selling uh, legally. Like, you know what I mean? In the early. Yeah, like I. Yeah. The iPod came out in 2001, I think. Napster came out in 1999. Yeah. Came out in 99? Yeah. Yeah. Oh God! Because so. I, I thought they were pretty much shut down by two thousand one. It is two thousand one. It only lasted two years. <laughs> they filed for bankruptcy in two thousand two. Because yeah, because okay, uh, I remember the whole uh, controversy with uh, Metallica and whatnot, and everybody hated Metallica because people couldn't steal their music anymore. Yeah, and it just I didn't realize that all happened within a two year span. Uh, iTunes came out in 2001, January. So that makes sense. Um, yeah, I like Media Play yeah. a lot. Do you? Uh, the second question, do you miss stores like this? Not, I do, because I do like, I don't know, I, th- I don't know if I said this last week or not. Uh, my wife and I, we had like some free time last Friday night, and I looked at her, I was like, you know, if this was like 20 years ago, we would be walking around a blockbuster video tonight looking for a movie to watch. And she's like, well, you would. I had a life. <laughs> <laughs> she did not. Wow. Uh, I did. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just funny. Like, I, you do miss that sort of stuff because at least at Blockbuster, I could have figured out a movie to watch. Now I go through every streaming app and go, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> I don't know what I, to watch. I spend more time looking at things to watch and don't watch anything. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I'm like an hour into it. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to turn on the office. Um, yep. That's so. exactly like I used to just like bounce around streaming and it's like what's new what haven't i seen uh this looks terrible <clears throat> and well did yeah, you just put on uh did you see instead of tiger king the new version that netflix has now monkey queen it's a oh documentary God. about a lady that owns a lot of monkeys okay <sighs> so that's what's on streaming right now what else you got for brian uh, let's see here from old man Brad of two B Tuesdays. I'm Brad. Uh, Brad says, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what is it? Pizza. Ooh, Jersey Mike's. The veggie. Why don't you just say subs and then you can have multiple different I, you know, I'm going to take sandwiches. Sand- I can only eat one food for the rest of my life. It'll be sandwiches. Okay. I would go subs. Jersey Mike's specifically. Just give me that veggie. Brian? Yeah. I mean, that's like, you're like really like narrowing it down for yourself. Like, Dude, I'd love the veggie. I mean, I like Jersey Mike's, but like, I mean, like every single day, three yeah. times a day. Yeah. Yeah. No. no All day. No. Um, this is hmm. it's tough. It's tough. Shrimp. I will say, uh, no, <laughs> uh, no, um, nope. Uh, I'm just. I'll just say probably like burgers. Like I could. Oh. I could eat hamburgers or like cheeseburgers. Like. And never get tired of them. A close second for um, me would be steak. St- steak is a tough one to give up. That's why yeah. I might have to be able to have a steak sandwich. Yeah, oh, a good call. And and you, you got to realize my definition of sandwich is pretty lenient. Yeah. Because hot dogs and hamburgers are sandwiches. No, I agree. If it's between a bun or a bread of some sort, I Tacos agree. Tacos are sandwiches. Mm, nah. It's between. You have to agree. No. Yep. Yeah, it, it's it's a bread product with stuff in the middle, and you eat it. No. No. Yep. Uh, what else? Uh, Pop tarts uh, or sandwiches? 
<laughs> if you could put some eggs in between. No, it's a bread product no. with something in the middle. Get out. Get the fuck out. <laughs> what else you got, Brian? Uh, let's see here. Um, from Tequila Mom at Pink Elephant. Jason, who is your favorite character in Bluey? <sighs> Bluey is a wonderful, wonderful show. I'm actually looking it up right now, making sure I don't miss anybody that I really like on Bluey. Um, I really... <laughs> I do like Aunt Trixie. Um, she's she's wonderful. Jeez. Uh, um, let's see here. There's Aunt Trixie. She's blue and uh, Bingo's aunt. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see here. I do. <laughs> I do like. Um, shoot. I do like Busker. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I believe Busker is the dog that. Do you remember that um, game where you wrap something up like eighty-seven times, and like everybody once the music stops, you unwrap whoever is holding it unwraps it, and then you go through another layer until finally whoever gets it at the end, you know, gets the prize. I have never played that. Game. Might be an Australian thing. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so he decided he was tired of going to birthday parties where just uh, every kid got something after every unwrapping. He's like, should only be one present. So at his kid's present. <laughs> His, his birthday party, he's like, nope, one present. You just unwrap it, you know, pass it around. The, it's a game. So the kid, the dogs all go around, and only one kid gets in. They're like, why don't we get something? And he's like, no, this is how you play the game. Not everybody gets everything. It's not fair. So they all start crying. So he starts handing out money. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, and the mom's like, you didn't think that one through, did you? <laughs> so uh, let's see here. I, I would say those are great. If you have not seen Bluey, it's a wonderful show. Um, let's I'm, see here. I'm a little confused there, Jay. Yeah. I thought the birthday child got the gift. They did too, but this is a game. So like pin the tail on the donkey or something like that. This is a game. And the idea was every, after every unwrapping, there's a little trinket or toy underneath it. So every kid basically ends up getting something. But he was like, that's stupid. It should only be the winner that gets it. Um, so I do like Chloe. She's the Dalmatian. She's Dalmatian. Um, so that's another good one. Uh, but yeah, so um, there we go. Uh, but which one's your favorite? You can ask list four. I did list four. I did list four. Um, I'll be honest. I, I You know what? It may not be popular. Uh, you know what? I'm going with the dad. I'm going dad. Blue's dad. Uh, he keeps it real. He keeps it real. What's his name? That's not even one that you said. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I like the mom, too. The mom. They have names. Isn't that oh, like yeah. It's, uh, it is. I think shoot. the mom was Bandit, wasn't it? No, Bandit's the dad. Oh. So it's Bandit. Sorry. Sorry. I know that, and I don't even watch the show. Sorry. I apologize. I apologize. So I'm going Bandit. So. There you go, uh, Tequila. Uh, we actually had a corrections, Brian. Did you skip, miss that? No. Oh. I, I got it. Oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I'm going out of order. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, let's see here. Next up from Jason, uh, Agent Palmer, Sturzik <laughs> at Agent Palmer. Uh, what fictional animal would make the best pet and which would make the worst? Ooh, I think in my mind, I think I know what I think would make the best pet. What's that? That would be Gleek, the Wonder Twins monkey. Like that? He would make the best pet. Why? Because he could actually do stuff for himself, Mm -hmm. but he'd still be fun to hang around with. Okay. I was going to say Mojo from The Simpsons. Uh, before um, he get, dies, <laughs> before he gets uh, uh, diabetes, yes, <laughs> before Homer kills him, basically. Pray for Mojo. Mojo. Uh, when you said Mojo, I thought you were talking about uh, Mojo Jojo from the uh, Powerpuff Girls. No, he's I don't a, know what Powerpuff. He's a bad guy from the Powerpuff oh. Girls, and he's a, a monkey also. Is he the one with the red? Ch- he's like a, like a like a red uniform with a funny mask. No. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm completely. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm going Mojo. Who you got, Brian? Best pet? Um, I think 
Garfield would be pretty cool. Be pretty easy. Uh, he's he's yeah. too moody for but, me. I mean, you would have to make a lot of lasagna. Uh, That's the issue. I'm I good with that. Yeah, but I don't want to make that much lasagna. To be honest with you, that's a lot. That's a lot of work. It's not really, but uh, <laughs> but it's enough. I don't want to do that. Eat your own cat food, dumbass. Um, what would be the worst? Is what he said too. Two part question: a dragon, any type of dragon. Oh, you're wrong. Man. Um, but I would pick Jabberjaw. Ta- Tasmanian. Oh, Tasmanian Devil. Uh, Ta- yeah. yeah, that would be a good Tasmanian one. Tasmanian Devil. That would be a terrible pet. Yeah. I picked Jabberjaw because, like, a shark, you know, would have to be in water, but I'm not going to be in water enough to enjoy having a shark as a pet. That's true. Does it have lasers? I don't think Jabberjaw ever had lasers. Oh, okay. Okay. Ill tempered bass. I think he played drums, though. Oh, well, that would be fun if he was good. You wouldn't want a bad drumming shark. Um, okay. What else we got here, Brian? Uh, let's see here. We did have one correction. Uh, let's see here from the Pop Culture Cafe. Uh, they say, correction from a few weeks ago. Samuel L. Jackson voiced Samurai Afro, not Samurai Jack. That's all right. We have a Samurai Jack Funko Pop to give away at the expo. But I asked Samurai Afro. So, uh, I, I misspoke on that. I don't even remember you saying that. So I did. Um, also, Pop Culture Cafe, we appreciate all your food from overseas. We are still getting through it all. Well, like, we've been taking, uh, what? Oh, you had something in your hand. Oh, I no, I'm not we doing it. Were... <laughs> well, you know what? Here, like this. Let's do this. Sakura and roasted soybean powder Kit Kats. We're going to try this. The guys will be here next week. They can fill in. Uh, here you go, Jeff. Oh. Oh. It's a Sakura... And soybean. Yep. Sakura and roasted soybean powder. While we do that, Brian, keep going here. What else we got? All right. Wrapping it up uh, from Professor Number One at Doctor Number One. He says, Does Jason know there are more lyrics to songs than just the title of the song? <laughs> no. But no. He, he, I think maybe two songs he might know more than just the title. What are those songs? Gummy bears, gummy bears. That's not one of Where them. do they live? I don't know. Where do they come from? Down the road. Nope. He cut my mic. Yeah, and I was chewing, so I didn't have anything to fill in either. <laughs> Down the road. Where do they go? Who knows? Gummy bears. That's their season 12 uh, theme song. So, uh, how's your Sakura? Yeah. Kit Kat. It's interesting. Okay. I mean, it's sweet. Mm-hmm. So you got that going for it. A little powder is a little different, but I think I can acquire a taste for that. I like it. I don't think any of the Kit Kats that we've gotten from the Pop Culture Cafe have been bad. I don't think we've gotten anything bad from the Pop Culture Cafe. Uh, next week we will when we try Honey Pickled Plums. I, I kind of wanted to do those tonight. Oh, God, no. Those no. sound good. No, those sound awful. Honey, good. Pickles, good. Plums, good. I don't see the problem. Death sauce. We got death sauce chips. Yeah, that might be tough for me. Uh, I don't know about that one. That might be a tough one to go with. We also have, uh, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Written Anyways. in languages we can't read. Yeah. So, um, okay, I guess that's the new. Do you have some news of the geek over there? DJ Fat Fingers, you got it? No. It's time for another episode of the news of the geek. Very well done, Jeff. Yeah, I screwed it up, but. You came close, though. I mean, it was good. It was close. <laughs> per the New York Post, where Brian gets all of his news from. Road Rage, maybe going mainstream. Card Jitsu, where professional brawlers battle one another inside the confined space of a sedan sized automobile. It's the latest bizarre combat sport cruising its way to success, featuring fighters on four wheels permitted to use anything within the car to their advantage, including seatbelts to choke out an opponent. It's called murder. I think I just saw this in a movie. Really? Yeah. Every movie? Yeah, Deadpool, and Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh, that's right. <laughs> 
Uh, uh, may sound slightly insane. Karjitsu is burning virtual rubber on social media, already boasting a reported average of 5 million views per week. That doesn't mean it's good. Celebrity fans include Keenan Thompson and Kevin Hart, and New Jersey has already approved it for gambling. <laughs> And ESPN wow. already aired it for the first time on the Ocho, the network's oh. annual weekend celebration of obscure sports on Sunday. I forgot to watch the Ocho. We watched it this week. We had dog surfing. Those dogs look petrified every single time. Um, there's something. No shit. <laughs> I know. I was like, and my wife goes, whose bright idea was this? Some Assholes. dogs like it. Golden Retrievers like it and labs. Everything else, No. Uh, there's something extremely visceral about watching these guys and gals go at it. Mike Salvis, co-founder of the Pro League Network, which owns the rights to Karjitsu, told the Post. What? Uh, quote, if you look at some of the footage, you see some of the camera guys mouthing to the director, holy shit, that actually happened. That doesn't mean it's good. The sport was originated by a Russian, <laughs> Russian grad student at Kansas State University named Vic Mikov in the United States. Or he was in the U.S. to earn his Ph.D. in mathematics. He's a black belt in judo and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He first came up with the idea of competitive grappling inside the vehicle in 2020, where you should be around close confines with another person. The league where fighters are smushed into seats. What's that? What's? I said, is he just in the car beating the shit out of himself? (laughs) I guess. (laughs) He had a mask on, so it's okay. Uh, The league... Where fighters smushed into seats and crushed into dashboards became official two years ago. Uh, it has thirty regular contenders. Each ma- or early matches were typically filmed inside the two thousand five Toyota Scion. It was chosen based on safety, size, and affordability, according to one league source. And it was inside a warehouse in Branson, Missouri. Oh boy, <laughs> uh, good old Branson. You had the band Alabama in the background playing, <laughs> or Oak Ridge Boy, Elvira. Uh, but other location cars are now being used. Again, the only lyrics of the song he knows. Elvira. Uh, the rules of engagement are quite straightforward. No shit. The sport operates using a two to three round system where both fighters must be buckled into their seats. Coin flip who decides who gets the driver's side and shotgun before alternating round two. The uh, match begins when the contenders unclick simultaneously. And if a winner isn't determined after two rounds set at three minutes each, the third f- round starts with both fighters fastened in the back row. Ooh. Uh, follows the rules of Brazilian jiu-jitsu, does it? Which doesn't teach punching or kicking. Instead, the focus is on painful chokeholds and bone-bending arm bars, among other techniques. Uh, Pro League New- uh, Network co-founder Bill Yucatans told the post the notion of being in a confined space like that it opens up a whole different stream of strategies than you would normally see uh adding the safety modifications like removing airbags were made to the car so they do remove the airbags at least yeah that would would be funny get slammed into the thing and then the airbag shoot you back yeah you'd be out uh anything is pretty much up for uh, grabs to use as leverage uh uh, though you cannot snap off uh something to use it as a weapon uh, each round requires a quite a bit of repair for the vehicle. Lots of times, fighters will quickly push the front seats all the way back to create a level environment. It's quite common to see seat belts intentionally wrapped around an opponent's neck. Oh. <laughs> um, in a recent bout, KJ, CJ, yeah, Ground Shark Hunter, uh, Bowen recalled tussling from the front seat to the passenger seat, back to the driver's seat, then to the back seat to outside the window. Fighters are allowed to swing out of the car. And the match starts with open windows, as long as they don't touch the ground outside the vehicle. Two referees. Oh, well, they have two referees, at least, would reset the match. Uh, let's see. There's also other things they have to adjust to, like such as lack of airflow, as air conditioning is not allowed. <laughs> uh, no one Is has... the car running? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, hit into drive. <laughs> We're going into the wall of the Whoever warehouse. Whoever passes and out from the, the fumes <laughs> loses. Oh, no, we just ran over Alabama. <laughs> and, uh, oh. uh, nobody has yet suffered a deliberate, deliberating, deliberating, debilitating. Thank you. Debilitating. <laughs> Groin injury at the mercy of the stationary gear shift. Oh, that's good. Another challenge is no real specified training you can do to be ready to fight. Since the concept is so new and out there, it's not quite known what just the best formula for victory is uh, or even what seats better. Uh, t- commentator T.J. Bowen said, making car fighting such a raw experience to touch a reality. 
He said, growing up in a not not great area meant always looking over your shoulder when getting into a car. I do have to say, I would probably, you know, recommend maybe a uh, an older car with a uh, gear shift on the column and opposed call. to in the middle there. Nice bench seat across the front. Uh, You're talking like an LTD, 78 LTD. Yes. I like that. I like that. Uh, and you both have to use the uh, use your work together to move the seat back. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. I'm not ready to attack you. Hold on. Move it back. It sounds amazing. Brian, you going to this? Uh, no, I probably won't be in Branson until, see, I'm 42, so I got another, like, 30 years. <laughs> Good call. Um, until, like, I hit my Branson, uh, <laughs> prime. Um, so it probably won't be around by then. Gotcha. Uh, this is from Jim. I like this one. Every week we need to do misleading headlines. Ah. I actually saw this, and then uh, it instantly uh, triggered a headline that I read today uh, for the, the exact same thing. Like, <laughs> so here we go. Go ahead. Sorry. No, you can do your. Hold on. Per com- most misleading headline of the week. Per comicbook dot com. Quote: Marvel kills off surprising Golden Age character. The tapestry of Marvel comics has included some interesting figures over the year, ranging from world renowned characters to lesser known heroes and villains. One particular protagonist who has not appeared in comics since the Golden Age just made a triumphant and deadly return in Scarlet Witch number one. The issue introduces a new employee of Wanda's Emporium, Mantor the Magician, who works as an appraiser of occult items at the shop. After transforming a grieving mother's fool's gold into something she can sell, he and the rest of the shop are quickly derailed by the arrival of a horde of supernatural beings outside. Mantor excitedly identifies the creatures and endlings and rushes to fight them, but he's immediately crushed to death by a spike. Uh, Mantor previously made a single Marvel Comics appearance in a backup story, not even in the main story, to 1940's Human Torch number 2. After saving a woman, Joan Winters, from suicide by drowning, Mantor begins to investigate the supernatural dealings that worsened her mental state. He eventually discovered that the ghost haunting Winters is her, her deceased father's mansion. Uh, we're actually two. Oh, the ghost in her deceased father's mansion. Sorry, we're actually two disgruntled employees in disguise. Is this Scooby Doo? Yep. Well, this is before Scooby Doo. That's this true. Was from the forties. The sole appearance and the depth of the storyline with his solo story makes Mantor return. Return in Scarlet, which won all that more surprising. That is a fucking worst ho- headline ever. Yeah. Ever but surprising because <laughs> it was a character that made one appearance sixty some. 80 something years ago. Years ago. But man, it's shocking. I mean, that shit. Go ahead, Brian. Do you have one today? Yeah. Uh, um, so the headline is uh, The NFL World Reacts to Horrible Bengals News. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, so I, I thought, like, I was like, oh my God, like, Burrow got hurt at practice right like Mm -hmm. something awful uh jamar chase is still not at practice that's the news that's not news that was that (laughs) that was the article that was the article that went with the headline uh the nfl world is reacting to that horrible news that has been happening for uh, a month now (laughs) seems fine it's fine like, um, God, I hate it. I, I, I immediately it was like I saw the headline and I like and I was like, oh shit! Like, Burrow got hurt or like, you know, Hendrickson got hurt. Like one of the like the you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. one of the star, like one of the you know, like one of the big name players got hurt, and I was like, shit! And then I clicked on it and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> he's okay. Like, yeah, like. That's it's not it's not horrible news. It's the same news that we've been getting for a month. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, what that oh. does is make uh, Andre Yosevich just that much more valuable in all my uh, 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 fantasy leagues. He's going to be a star. Oh, you did draft Yoshi, didn't you? I, I think I got Yoshi in three of my four fantasy leagues. 
just because he might be uh, a valu- viable target week one. He might be a giant. Um, real quick. No, he's a Bengal. Oh, sorry. Uh, we won't do plot, plot lines this week. We'll do it when all of us are back in the office next week. Um, yes, studio, whatever it's called. Uh, so this is the best part. So this is not on the thing, but we talked about this off air um, a couple of days ago on our uh, message board. Um, Austin Allred uh, on on Twitter, uh, real person, tweeted this. And it basically, he was summarizing it. So did everybody hear about the Chase Unlimited Money glitch? Oh. Chase Bank. Yes. yes. So for those yes. that weren't aware, basically, it went viral on TikTok. So basically, people were writing themselves a giant check. Not like a giant, literally, physically a giant check, but a check for, say, $35,000. They would then mobile deposit that check on Chase Bank's app. And then they would go to the ATM, and there was a flaw, a flaw in the system for the mobile app that would actually automatically put it into your bank account without verifying it or having a two-day hold or whatever it is. So they go to the ATM, and then they withdraw the check or the cash before the check has even cleared. Basically, it's check fraud, right? That's exactly what it is. It's, it's a crime. <laughs> it's not a it's hack. not basic. It, it is. So don't it do is that. Fraud. <laughs> it is a crime. So people didn't know that. Well, they did, but they didn't care. So they, this uh, this got out, I think it was last Saturday. So on TikTok, people were filming themselves running out of the banks with all this money. <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck are you doing? And so basically, uh, Chase Bank, two days later on Monday, realized what happened and said, um, you owe us that money back. Yeah. <laughs> and with interest... And there's a punishment because you overdrew. <laughs> yeah, penalty for over withdrawing. You still have to pay the money back. We will uh, prosecute alert the authorities and prosecute. <laughs> so the one guy got a, th- a receipt from or a bill from Chase Bank that he owed thirty one thousand dollars, and he's like, I-, "I don't have that much money." <laughs> He's like, what am I going to do? My life's ruined. It's like, and people were commenting like, this isn't Grand Theft Auto. Like, you can't just get money. (laughs) You you don't just hit the reset button. No. (laughs) So people are going nuts that they're losing all this money now. (laughs) I mean, now granted, Chase probably should not have had that uh, uh, happen. I mean... It is a conspiracy theory for a bigger thing. They said uh, that's what people are saying online. Because I, I knew in the in the '90s, I knew people who would like deposit stuff at the ATM with nothing in the envelope and then withdraw it right away. Oh, damn! I take I mean, it that's not allowed anymore. Uh, no, I mean you, when you're depositing it, it shouldn't go right into correct with availability of withdrawal. Yeah, so th- that's the best part, Brian. You got something on in the background there. Hello? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello? Hello. There you go. Uh, it sounded like TV or something. Um, but anyways. Uh, no. Oh. So, yeah. So, people are now upset uh, by that, that they have to pay this money back, and they already spent it. So, um, don't do that. Best part is, um, if you use your bank card, they they have your information. <laughs> Like they know who you are. You have if you open an account with them, they know who you are. They have your social security. They have your address. They have your name. <laughs> they have everything. Don't do that. <laughs> now, so. if you happen to open up an account with them under false name and address and social security, they might not have that. But then you got other issues. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another felony there. Oh Jeff. yeah, yeah, yeah. Multiple felonies. <laughs> so uh, at the end of the day. What are we doing here, people? Yeah, it's not a life hack if it's a felony, is it? <laughs> no. No. It's a felony hack. It's more like it. Uh, but I love the... This isn't Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> you can't do that. Uh, Jeff, you got some box office news and world <laughs> reports over there? Or domestic reports? It's time for box office bombs. Bombs. The Crow made $1.8 million. A total of 8.6 million domestic. And, well, whew, at least we get 13.2 million worldwide on a $50 million budget. According to 411mania.com, the less said, the better. I don't think 
it's going to make its money. I, I don't think so either. Eh, nope. Wait till it goes streaming. It wasn't even in the top ten this week. It fell. Yeah. And we're only reading the top five. Yes. Which number one was Deadpool and Wolverine, still at number one, made another $15.1 million, a total of 604 on a $200 million budget. Number 16th gross, highest grossing film. Of all time. They said if it gets to 624, it would be 13. It would pass the Avengers. Ooh. Domestically. Yeah. And for uh, inflation. Uh, yeah. Not regulated for inflation. Uh, number two, Alien Romulus made another $9.3 million, a total of $91 million. On a budget of ninety million, it's budget back. It's uh, made two eighty, I think, overseas total. So nice, go alien. An yes. alien sequel, people don't hate. Sure, it ends with us made seven point four million, a total of one hundred thirty six million on a twenty five million dollar budget. That made its money back. That good, huge, beautiful, beautiful box office for it ends with five times. Yeah. Uh, Reagan made seven point four million, a total of nine point two million in its opening weekend, on a twenty five million dollar budget, sitting pretty at eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, that low? Yeah. Uh, but it's got an A minus on Cinema Scores. Fan, uh, uh, the audience really loves it. Oh, okay. If you like it, good for it's, you. It's because of Kevin Sorbo. That's right. <laughs> and did you know that there's an after credit scene? With Kevin Sorbo? I don't know. Oh. They, they, people online were like, oh my god, there's actually an after credit scene in Reagan. And people were like, you know what that means? Sequel. The, pre- the presidents are getting together to form Sequel. the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> Reagan, Nixon, Carter, <laughs> Bush. <laughs> the ex-president. They're going to start robbing banks. That's right. <laughs> and need Johnny Utah to stop. Who can get to it? Get it, Keanu. I just like that. What the hell? We're doing an after credit? Good for you. And rounding out the top five, Twisters made $7.2 million, a total of $259.6 million on a $155 million budget. It's pretty good since it's on street. Oh, you can rent it now. Yeah, it, $7.2 million still in the, Well, everyone says you, you got to see that one in the theater. Yeah. Which makes sense for the type it is. Yeah. Um, what we got upcoming, Brian, for September 6th? Uh, let's see. Upcoming, we have The Cowboy and the Queen. This is a documentary Ooh. Uh, about renegade horse trainer Monty Roberts and who finds an unlikely ally. Doug. <laughs> What's that? He found an unlikely uh, ally. No, Doug. No. <laughs> is that Doug's new nickname? The unlikely ally? No, Ooh, no, I like it. it. Was, Change approved. Sorry. The unlikely ally is Queen Queen Elizabeth II, <laughs> who helps him overcome fierce skeptics to spread his nonviolent message globally. I really thought you you were going to say Queen Latifah. <laughs> that would be cool. Shampoo. Ah, well, we'll skip that one. What else is coming out? Um, we have another documentary coming out called Lover of Men, colon, The Untold History of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, is this on the uh, Spice Network? This, examine, <laughs> this examines the intimate life of America's most consequential president, Abraham Lincoln. Hmm. That's it? Um, <laughs> Who plays Abraham Lincoln? Yeah, well... The intimate life of him. Oh, not his vampire Lover slave. Of life. Men. Um, to quote four one one mania. Yeah. the less said, the better. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Actually, when you you read that, I, I was a little worried because I heard you say the lover of men colon <laughs> mm, men's colon <laughs> get you going in the morning. <laughs> Uh uh-huh. uh uh-huh, sling blade. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, also we have coming out the thicket. Oh. Uh <laughs> a boy from West Texas uh after his sister is kidnapped by a violent killer known only as Cutthroat Bill enlists a fierce bounty hunter named Reginald Jones, 
who becomes the leader of the group of outcasts searching for the stolen girl. This sounds like a, a English class assignment, like in seventh grade, somebody wrote. Let's write it. Let's make him cutthroat Bill. Well, where's who's the good guy? Reginald. <laughs> we made a movie out of my um, seventh grade actually, uh, <laughs> short story. <sighs> sounds wonderful. Uh, this movie, this movie stars Juliette Lewis. Oh, I heard of her. Peter Dinklage. I know him. The Dinkles. And uh, a bunch of other people that I've never heard of. Okay. Hmm. Written by Billy Kip. Let's see. From seventh awesome. grade. What else we got? Uh, who? What? No, nope, nothing. Go ahead. No, it's written by Chris Kelly. Oh. Uh, let's see. <laughs> the also astronaut? coming out, we have the front. <laughs> the football coach? Uh, oh, that's Chip I, Kelly. I can look. Hang on. <laughs> I don't think that's it's not the astronaut. Uh, Chris Kelly. Chris Kelly. Out of the two Kelly uh, guys, I don't no, think either of them are was... Chris. <laughs> isn't he a senator? Uh, no, he was not an astronaut. <laughs> I think he's talking about Mark Kelly. <laughs> or his brother. Yeah. Chip. <laughs> or Chris. Yeah. Yeah. What else we got? Uh, also coming out. We have uh, the front room. In the front room. Uh, I think you're trying to. This say tells the story. White room. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Brian. Yeah. No, you're good. Uh, this uh, the front room tells the story of a newly pregnant couple who are forced to take in an ailing, estranged stepmother. Uh, nope. Uh, uh, this stars Brandy, the singer. <laughs> Take a drink. We got a Brandy sighting. Good for her. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, and then the uh, last but not least, most importantly, we have Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Ugh. The, oh. the Beetlejuice sequel. I wonder what the third one will be called. Juice. The juice is loose. <laughs> I mean, you can't say his name three times, right? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? I do like the progressive commercials yeah. when he's like, well, what's the rules of this? If I say it once and the narrator says it twice, <laughs> does that count? I think the same person has to say, I don't know. Um, Although Beetlejuice was the uh, uh, imp- impetus of one of the cleverest jokes in the history of television. What's that? In one of my favorite shows, Community. Oh, God. Throughout, oh, yeah. Like, the first two seasons, I guess, like the name <laughs> Beetlejuice was said. At, like, And then when they realized when they were writing another Beetlejuice joke, they realized it was the third time they were saying Beetlejuice. So right after the person said it in the background, someone dressed as Beetlejuice walked Walks by. by. <laughs> um, also, to just let you know, Beetlejuice is expected 105 to 110 million opening. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to go see it. Um, okay. uh, the, I mean, they got everybody back too. Um, wow, well, not everyone. everybody who's alive. Like, yeah, except well, Alec Baldwin. Yeah, everybody who's yeah, yeah, except for Alec Baldwin. You're Acquit right. it, Alec Baldwin. Or case thrown out, I should say. Alec yeah, Baldwin. I, was, I didn't think he was acquitted. No, it was case thrown out. But wasn't a was a new one brought up? Uh, here's an issue. Um, if you're a prosecutor, make sure you put all the, you know, dot your eyes and cross your t's. Put all the evidence into so the defense can see it. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeff, do we have some top five music for once? Uh-uh. Boy, oh boy, weren't they great. That's the Lobotomized Monkey, and now, the Top 5. Top 5 this week is favorite TV slash movie cars from our childhood. Which is a lot easier said than what I wrote (laughs) when we were growing up. You got got somebody on your phone there, Brian? (laughs) No. Oh, okay. Yeah, we we are picking up something here. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but something. 
Uh, let's see here. Top five this week. Uh, there you go. Uh, Jeff, what's your number five? Uh, my number five, I'm going to go with Brett Matthews. What's that? A.K.A. Turbo Teen. Oh. It was the cartoon where the guy fused with his car and he could turn into his car. So it was a cool car and a cool ability to turn into a car. Uh, my number five, The Simpsons, not the Homer, the Canyon Arrow. That's too big for the road. <laughs> Canyon Arrow. Canyon Arrow. <laughs> Not allowed in these states. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Uh, it's just so ginormous that it's not even allowed on the road. So, oh, I uh, add something. Maybe I'll just throw it down as an honorable mention. Brian, what do you got? Uh, let's see. Number five for me. I'm gonna go with the uh, station wagon from uh, National Lampoon's Vacation. Good call. Oh, the family truckster. Yep. The family truckster, yep. It's going to be yours one day, Russ. <laughs> uh, what's your number four? That's a good one. Uh, number four for me, I will go with the DeLorean. Oh, yeah, from Back to the Future. Oh, I didn't know who's specifically picking the yeah. time traveling DeLorean or just just Eddie a DeLorean. DeLorean. Just a DeLorean. Do you want the Back to the Future one, the time traveling one, Brian? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, any any of the DeLoreans, I like the I I just it doesn't matter. You just want the doors to go up when you open them. Going uh, yes. doors. Uh, number four for me is Ecto One from Ghostbusters. <laughs> Especially now in the newer ones, when the door slides out and they can shoot from the side, they made it much cooler. They did. They did. Uh, number four for you, Jeff. Uh, number four for me. I'm going to go with Sunstreaker. What's that? That is one of the Transformers. Ah. One of the original Transformers. He was one of the uh, Lamborghini Brothers ones. He was the yellow one. Okay. Okay. Which makes sense. Sun. (laughs) Number three? Uh, Number three for me, I am going with the Mean Machine. Oh. That was Dirk Dastardly's Mm -hmm. car. uh, Dirk Dastardly and Muttley's car in the Wacky Races. Yep. Uh, number three for me is um, is going to be what is it? Sorry. Oh, there it is. Uh, Plain Strange Automobiles is Chrysler Town and Country that is put together that barely runs at the end, but she's not much to look at. But she'll get you where you need to go. <laughs> uh, does the speedometer work? No, <laughs> but the radio does. Damn this thing. Um, so there you go, Brian. What do you got? Brian, number oh, three. Let's see here. Number three for me. Yeah, number three for me. Can you hear me? Yep, we yep, got you. Go ahead. Hello? Okay. Yep. Uh, I am going to go with the Mystery Machine. Oh, I forgot about that. It's a good one. Scooby Doo Mystery Machine. Okay, I like that. I think there are a lot of uh, sandwiches eaten in that Mystery Machine. Your choice. Food. Uh, what's your number two? Uh, number two for me, I will go with the Blues Mobile. Oh, oh, Blue Brothers. Okay, Blues Brothers. Okay, good, good choice. It's durable. It is durable. So, uh, my it is. my number two. This is quite possibly one of my. For some reason, I just love this. It makes me laugh every time I see it. It's the Mutt Cuts fan from Dumb and Dumber. When it's going over the hill, it makes me laugh every time. I love the van. Uh, so, yeah, Dumb and Dumber. Uh, yep, that's a good one. I'll give you that. That's good. Uh, my number two, I'm going to go with uh, the Light Cycle from Tron. Horrible film. Great vehicle. Yeah, the vehicle's great. Yeah. The four, I don't think the film is horrible. It's not good. It's it, it's it 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 served its purpose. Sure. Uh, what's your number on one? The poster. It served. Its <laughs> it purpose. served its purpose. What's your number one? My number one is the land speeder that Luke Skywalker <gasps> drove. I didn't even think of that. It's a good one. See Brian in Star Wars when they're <laughs> on the desert planet of Tatooine. He's got his like you know he's the the nineteen year old kid or eighteen year old kid. How old he's supposed to be? He's got his car. 
it it runs. It's like a hovercraft. It runs on air that uh, it floats across the desert. No wheels. Because he was a moisture farmer. Yes, they farmed moisture. Uh, my number one oyster farmer. Yeah, because it's a desert. So how do you survive? You need water. So you ha- harvest the moisture into water. Learned that out on Star Wars Outlaws. Said- What's that? I thought you said oyster. Oh, <laughs> oyster farmer could be good too, just not in a desert. <laughs> yeah, it would be terrible. That's to- that's why I was <laughs> I was very confused about the desert and the oysters. Um, my number one. This is. George Barris, this is not a surprise to anyone. 1966, Adam West, Batmobile. The Batmobile. So, uh, favorite car of all time. Love it. We have a yeah. replica in the studio over there behind the case. In glass. Yes, it's beautiful. Um, so, yeah. Uh, number one for you, Brian? Uh, number one for me, I am going to go with the Ferrari from Ferris Bueller. Oh, yeah. You know, if you just run it backwards, the miles go off. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't happen. That doesn't work. Yeah. You sure? Found out the hard way. Oh, you tried it? No, they did. <laughs> oh, did you watch the movie? I did. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, we did have a lot of listeners, listener feedbacks here. Uh, okay. Jacoba, I tweets by Jacoba. What do you got? You got Facebook? I'll pull up Facebook. Okay. Uh, he has the DeLorean, the Mystery Machine, Eleanor from Gone in sixty seconds, very good, Ecto One, and oh yeah, the General Lee from Dukes of Hazard. Uh, honorable mention: Herbie the Love Bug and uh, Flying Car from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Uh, Randall Holt at RJ Holt six six six. He's not evil. He's just handled that way. That's right. Uh, Batmobile, My from, brother. That's right. Batmobile, Batman TV. Good job. DeLorean from Back to the Future. This is a good one. Magnum's Ferrari from Magnum P.I. That's where I thought Brian was going when he started with the Ferrari. But. Uh, Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters. And Kit from Knight Rider. Nobody had Kit. Honorable uh, mention, General Lee from Dukes. Uh, Catwoman's Cat Car from Batman TV Series. That's a good one. And the pickup truck from The Fall Guy. Ah. Uh, let's see here. And I think that was it from just my side, but we had a lot on Facebook. Yeah, we got, uh, uh, Jason, uh, responded, uh, number, well, I guess, should I start at five and go to one or one and go to five? Yeah, go to five. Uh, number five, the VW bug convertible in midnight madness. (laughs) Number four, the VW bus (laughs) in fast times at Ridgemont high. (laughs) Number three, the VW vanagon in Jimmy, the kid. Number two, the VW bug in Herbie. And number one, the VW bus in Back to the Future. Not the DeLorean. <laughs> the bus. The bus. So if you would like to buy a Volkswagen, come on down and see Jason at the Volkswagen dealership. <laughs> the Gimp oh. has at number five, the Mutz Cuts van. Oh, there you go. Number four, the Mystery Machine. Number three, the Death Mobile. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about the Death Mobile. What's that from? Animal House. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Good one. Uh, number two, Eleanor. Go on, 60 seconds. And number one, the General Lee. Okay. Uh, Steve Smith. He's got number five, Miami Vice Testarossa. Number four, Bandits Trans Am, Smokey and the Bandit. Yep. Number three, the Fall Guy truck, the GMC. Number two, Kit from Knight Rider. Number one, the General Lee. He had honorable mention. He said uh, the Lamborghini Countach from Cannonball Run, but he couldn't take anything else off it's a good one uh brian hour number five highwayman's truck slash helicopter oh that's a good one number four bj mckay's <laughs> semi because i'm bj mckay and this is my best friend bear uh number three the general lee number two kit and number one robin one the ferrari from magnum pi uh, Jim sent in his ma- his list. He's got number five, Raven. Number four, Shark. Number three, Rhino. Number two, Stiletto. And number one, he hobied it. He tied Thunderhawk and Gator. What is that? G.I. Joe's? It's from Mass. Oh. 
Oh, man. Mask sucks. I'm Brad. We'll be very disappointed with you. He will be. <laughs> uh, Joe Keating. Number five, the Adam West Batmobile. Number four, Kit. Number three, Street Hawk Motorcycle. Number two, Smokey and the Bandit Trans Am. That's a lot more popular than I thought. And Good number job. one, the General Lee. And finish it up with Nick Mayer here, Jeff. Uh, number five, he hobied the 1967 Plymouth Belvedere from Tommy Boy. That's a good 1987 one. 1987 Chevy Caprice police car from Black Sheep. Do you know how fast you were going? You're going eight. Yeah, seven. Seven, seven miles an hour. <laughs> number four, the Aston Martin Vanquish in Die Another Day. That's the one that went invisible. Mm-hmm. Uh, number three, the Porsche 911 Turbo in Bad Boys. Number two, the Lamborghini Countach from the opening scenes of Cannonball Run. And number one, General Lee from the Dukes of Hazzard. There you go. With some honorable mentions of the Firebird from Hooking the Bandit <laughs> and Eleanor from Gone in 60 Seconds. Gone in 60 Seconds is such a good campy film. I love Gone in 60 Seconds. Yeah, it's a good, fun, relaxing film to watch. It, it is a... Nicholas Cage movie I don't hate. Yeah. And there are very few of them. I will say and the I, love story with uh, but, him and uh, Angelina Jolie. Yeah, is really rough <laughs> because it's just like, what? Uh, but it was still, it's a really good show. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, the cast is really good for that movie, too. Like, it is. A ton of like young, young people that have went on to have like huge careers. Can't get wrong with any film with Delroy Lindo. That's one of those young people, Jason. <laughs> Timothy Oliphant. <laughs> oh, Timothy Oliphant. Giovanni uh, Robisi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when you yeah. were giving your list, I went, oh, it made me think of uh, an honorable mention for me. What's that? I have to say the Adobe. <laughs> Saturday Night Live. Live commercial, the little car made of clay. They put flowers in the back. <laughs> And then when it got damaged, you just mold the clay back. (laughs) And then the sunroof is they just peel the clay back. (laughs) Great one. It's Adobe. Uh, Yeah. So there you go. There's our top five. Um, Bad idea of the week. Um, Number 38. uh, Check fraud. Don't do it. Very bad idea. Don't do it, people. It's not a hack. It's a felony. (laughs) Matter of fact, I'm writing that down. It's not a hack. <laughs> so titles for the show. It's not a hack. It's not a hack. It's, it's a felony. A felony. Writing that one down just in case. Uh, I also have the unlikely ally. Uh, is he an astronaut? That's a bold choice. And tacos or sandwiches. I think that's all I had. Yeah. Uh, we can't go tacos or sandwiches. There'll be too many people yelling at me that. <laughs> um, that's a lot of cats. Uh, get the cat demographic there are a lot of nouns in star wars <laughs> the history of no ideas that would be fitting that man makes us go bleh a bad drumming shark <laughs> desert oysters and it's not a hack it's a felony brian you got anything uh i wrote down uh babbling dogs Anakin Pencil Walker. (laughs) (laughs) I like that one. Uh, Those are the only two that I wrote down. I feel like we have to go with it's not a hack. It's a felony. I think I agree with that. Yeah, that's. that's I do like Anakin Pencil Walker. (laughs) Could you save that for next week? (laughs) Just throw it in there somewhere else. (laughs) Uh, uh, Sure. You know what, Brian? You weren't here and we didn't even talk Nazis. Really? Oh, really? Dang it. Oh. Really? Sorry. Oh. Damn it. So close. Damn it. I mean, we were just about ready to say goodbye, Jason. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. From Walking Dead to Talking Heads, from comic books to TV sets, there's a history. Not so bad, there's a history. It's the history of bad. So bad. History of bad, it's bad. History of bad ideas. Oh, yes. You've been listening to Hobie.